guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to to episode 5 of Ocean of Nokoi. So let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. That was like the weirdest delay ever, but okay. <laughs> Repeat. Right? You don't know until you ask. No, baby, it's not what you think. <laughs> oh. me <laughs> Ruby right so just ask her same don't be stubborn Okay, that's not bad.
There you are. <laughs> Plus he did the charm. And then you won't like it. Oh, she's so pretty. Oh, that's her! That's hot. Yes. I mean, that's cool, though. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it, of course, one of those girls will literally fall for that. Tell you that.
Remember, you want to get close to about stuff about I. So that's the big reason why you're doing this. You just talk about whatever. Now, if you want to talk about something like The Hills from MTV. <laughs> <laughs> and I might have to talk about that, but we'll talk about that towards the end of the episode. It was one sided. Not the teacher, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, but we've all had crushes on teachers. Prove it. Please. Yeah. Go study a dance routine, something practice on your singing.
She's right. Basically, yeah. Ew. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to hear that because <laughs> it's probably something I did. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Oh, dang.
It's been an hour. He tried to kill me. No. I got. Okay. I literally cannot. <laughs> I mean, they did their best. And I'm kind of hoping that eventually this duo will be a trio. I can I can see like three girls. I, I would, would I like to see more like four or five or like a big group like a K-pop group, which is nine or even something like Love Live, which is also nine. Not really. I feel like the smaller the better. That's just me because like a lot of my favorite majority of my favorite girl groups are either in duos, trios, maybe four. And then, you know, if we're going into K-pop and J-pop, that's when we're going into bigger, higher numbers and such and quality. Um, so both of the, mm, no, okay. All three of the girls from the D. <laughs> The reality dating show um, are interesting. Like I said, best girl is finally here, in my opinion. It's the light hair blue girl because she was the one I've been waiting for, for the waiting for the longest time. A lot of people literally told me about her, and I was like, oh my god, she's so pretty, without like literally spoiling a lot of shit about her. But she seems very much to herself. I do like the fact that if she has questions, she immediately asks them. And because she's trying to convey just really much of all of them. They're trying to convey a certain role. And that's the things about reality dating shows in a nutshell. I mean, <laughs> um, if you look at new rea uh, reality shows in a nutshell or even older reality shows in a nutshell or even dating reality in nutshells. We all know it's like quote unquote fake. We all know it regardless. But there is always something and as someone who watches a lot of reality TV or now with dating shows I don't watch a lot. Like there's there's really only two and that's Love is Blind and then The Bachelor slash Bachelorette but I watch more of The Bachelorette than The Bachelor because I, I feel like the guys on The Bachelor, they, <laughs> and, and this is just me being honest, they don't, the connection, some of them, not all of them, and I really would say the ones who come in and they know nothing about the show, they're only coming in for like clout and, and such, and they're just like, oh, I'm here to have a good time and such. Usually those are the guys that I cannot stand. And ABC will always bring in those types of guys to be the leading man. And then 50 out of 50, if you're looking at a guy who goes on the Bachelorette season, you get to know them a little bit more. And then if they become the Bachelor, you're like, 50 out of 50, yes, we have a good behind chance or no, this ish is going to suck. And there have been a couple of seasons very recently where it has sucked. Now with the girls, it's more like, you kind of know the story is going to end happily, maybe. But when you're looking at both of those shows, and I will also put Love is Blind in there as well, or any other dating reality show, um, that possibly ends in a marriage or an engagement, everybody always, because I know it, <laughs> I, even follow, I have friends and I follow friends who do it too, just like me, <laughs> we all usually will place bets on how long this couple will last. Like, we already know that whenever filming starts, well, not, not starts, concludes. So usually filming is about like three to six months. And then of course they have to do all the editing and everything. 
that time, that couple, whoever won, they're together. And then once everything is playing out on TV for us to watch, they're still together. That is when either The Bachelor or The Bachelorette or whoever is, like, always apologizing to their significant other saying, like, sorry I kissed this character, sorry I kissed that character, X, Y, and Z, da 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 And then once we find out who it is, and this is always the most hilarious thing, 24 hours after the final episode... First thing, 50 out of 50, you always will see something in the magazines or you'll see a news article come out saying that the two have decided to end their engagement and their relationship, whatever. Or sometimes they end up making it to the altar, married for a whole year, and then they cut it off. And it's like, okay, yeah, you got to congratulate them because sometimes they can make it to the end and such. And then they, you know... <laughs> decided to cut the cord. But looking at this reality dating show for this is giving me the Hills vibes and Laguna Beach vibes. If you have ever seen or heard of Laguna Beach, and if you have not, I would definitely go ahead and watch Laguna Beach and the Hills. The way that these characters are asking certain things about from the crew is very similar towards that because once again, as I said, we all know it was fake. Um... As someone who watched The Hills back and forth like so many freaking times, you can kind of, there's a lot of points that you can pinpoint where that was fake, that was fake, that was fake, that was fake. And it's funny because so many years later, um, some of the cast who are still successful now and like better and better things, like one of them is a fashion designer, one of them's a YouTuber, and I don't, <laughs> I don't remember about another girl, um... Some of them are still trying to do television because they were popular and they're trying to gain that following again. Some of them will say, well, oh, I remember, like, this didn't happen in the show like this. It was actually like this. Um, there's even a point in, like, this series finale where they wanted to be funny where it was on um, <laughs> the background of a Hollywood set and just showing it. And basically, I think when we all saw that in 2000 and... Mm, God, when did the hell's end? 2009? No, I felt like 2010, I believe. Um, That, like, gave another thing in our mind saying, like, of course, yes, there were a lot of things that were real. Like, maybe say, like, the relationships or whatever, the situations that happened to the main character or the main person who was on Laguna, then eventually to the hills until she left. Um some relationships some situations like her going to paris and again and this is down the third and some things you could tell that was really shady and fake and that was really quote unquote only for cameras that's what i'm getting with this like of course seeing aqua talking with the uh with the girl with the long dark blue hair and then her eventually like saying that oh hey cameras are looking at us so let me take this moment to kind of flirt with you even though um She's, she slowly but surely has feelings for him. But it's just like, you don't know how it's going to go. It could go a good way. It could go a bad way. It's just we're looking at all these characters as a whole. And I'm questioning who is going to be the one who is going to make this show possibly go down. And for it to maybe be a little toxic. I mean, the girl with the long hair, like, she, she looks like she's the type. Um... The YouTuber, maybe. The other girl, my, aka which, my other best girl, her. I can see her maybe doing something. Or even one of the guys could be doing something. Like, I don't think Aqua's going to do anything. But something can happen. And something definitely will happen. But, of course, we got to wait and see. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction to be towards episode 5 of Oshino no Koi. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially all next, I'm about to say Thursday, next Wednesday for episode six. Bye, guys.